Did you know that there are over 200,000 fonts in the world? That's a crazy and intimidating number, especially when you're getting started with your design presentations. If you look at all the famous architectural firms in the world, they all have a unique style of font that they use in their projects. Most of the time, these fonts are a reflection of the design process and ideologies. It would definitely take us a lot of time to reach that point, but we all can get started somewhere. So in this video, we'll be looking at some basic typography tips that can be useful for architects in their design presentations and portfolios and we'll also look at some 10 different types of fonts that are being used commonly in architecture and the design community. I'm Salman, an architect and an illustrator. So if you're new to the channel, make sure you're subscribed and hit the bell icon for notification. So we'll get started with the basic typography tips. Number one, size matters. That's what she said. <laughs> So the most basic thing in typography is the font size. We need to be aware of the font size and if it works with the overall context of the sheet that we're working on. Consider if you will be printing the sheet or you'll only be using it in a digital format. If you're printing it, then you can maybe take a rough A4 print with different sizes of fonts and you can use that as, as a reference for your design presentation sheets. This way you can avoid a lot of mistakes with the font sizes. Most of the presentation sheets have three different sizes of fonts. The first one is the title of the font for which we use the maximum font size so that it draws attention to the sheet when someone is looking at it for the first time. A slightly lesser size can be for your subheadings and your paragraph text can have the least font size. Tip number two is emphasis. Imagine there's a large paragraph with the same font style and size. It would be really difficult for someone to skim through the paragraph and read the context. So to break this paragraph and make it easily readable, we can use emphasis on certain text and highlight them. Also, don't overdo this or it might get too confusing for the readers. Tip number three, minimalism does not hurt. Sometimes the best way is the minimal way. Keeping the text simple and minimal will not just look good, but will also save you a lot of time in your presentation. Tip number four, text need to breathe. The legibility of a paragraph depends on the letters, words and text lines. In order for a text to be readable, you need to have a fair amount of white space between them. This applies to each individual paragraph, but you need to adjust the spacing and tracking to make them readable. And this also applies when you have multiple paragraphs of text put together. It's always better to not have a long continuous paragraph in design sheets and break them wherever possible. You could also have a small two-line summary in case you have a long paragraph of text which might be difficult to read. Tip number five, be thoughtful with colors. Using colors in text can be tricky because this could literally make or break your presentation. If you choose to use colors in your sheet, try to pick a prominent color in your drawing so that it doesn't look odd. Also, prioritize readability over the choice of colors. Using black in most cases would be a safer option. Tip number six, learn the basics of typography. As architects, we would spend a lot of time in design presentations in not just our academics, but all through our career. So investing the time to read some popular books on typography would definitely be worth it in the long run. Creating typography is more than just putting some fancy fonts together. So here are some book recommendations that you can use. The Elements of Typographic Style by Robert Bringshurt. This book is a brief history of typography as an art and it's a compact encyclopedia of typographic symbols, concepts and traditions. The next one is Typography, a Manual of Design by Emil Roder. This book talks about the fundamentals of typography in the field of design and it's a manual to get started with typography. Now with that being said, let's move on to the list of 10 different fonts that you can use in your presentations. These are some really popular fonts that are used both in the print as well as in the digital media. Number one is Helvetica. Helvetica is one of the most popular and widely used typefaces in the world. It is created in the 1950s and is a sans serif typeface. You can see it being used in a lot of logo designs and website designs. It has tons of variations like regular, oblique, bold, Helvetica new and the list goes on. It's a clean and classic font that you can use for your projects and portfolios. Number two is Bebas New. I have personally become a Bebas New addict in the recent days and you can see it being used in all my social media posts, video editing, reel and so on. The original Bebas New font was released in 2005 and the redesigned version of it was released in 2010. This font has been used for many projects from large companies to startup designers due to its versatility and simplicity. You can pair it with Monster at Light, Open Sans or Roboto. This is a great choice for designers who want a bold and impactful font that stands out from the crowd. Number 3. Montserrat This was introduced in 2011 and featuring highly geometrical and legible characters that are favorable by a lot of designers. 
As an open source font with elegant, stable and commercially driven aesthetics, this sets apart from other font styles, offering a compelling alternative to the premium font Gotham. This can be paired with Open Sans, Lora or Lato. And this is one of my favorite fonts on the list as well. Number 4 is Futura. Futura was designed in 1927 but it's still considered to be modern. We've seen it used everywhere from cars to furniture stores and whatnot. It was a representative of the Bauhaus ideology which is function over form. The Futura font includes an extensive family of different fonts and weights making it incredibly versatile for any project. It's close to 100 years but Futura is still being used as one of the most favorite fonts and it could definitely be a great addition to an architect's arsenal of fonts. Number 5 is Roboto. Roboto is a sans serif typeface family developed by Google as a system font for its mobile operating system Android. Roboto has a unique aesthetics and user-friendly design. It can be a great choice for paragraph text because of its easy readability even in small sizes. But this font family can be used together for your titles and subtitles to give a uniform look as well. It has different variations called Roboto Slab, Roboto Condensed and Roboto Mono. Number 6 is Garamond. This is probably the oldest font in this list. Garamond is a classic serif font that has been used for over 500 years. The font was named after Claude Garamond, a French engraver who lived in the 16th century, who also designed the original font. Garamond fonts are distinguished by the elegant, sophisticated and refined appearance which makes them a popular choice for a wide range of printed and digital medium. You can see that it looks really good for subheadings and body text and has a classic appearance to it. You might have seen this font on the text description of many diagrams and drawings and the spacing of this font makes it extremely legible. Number 7. Gotham Gotham is a geometric sans serif typeface designed in the year 2000. Gotham's letter forms were inspired by the signage designs of the mid 20th century of New York. This font family has been used in the rebranding of popular brands like Cartoon Network, Twitter, Tom Ford and Channel. The Gotham font family comes in 66 styles and it's supported in 60 languages and it's highly versatile. From being the number one choice for rebranding to becoming the Obama font in the 2008 presidential election, the use of Gotham font has been really strong. And this is also one of the most popular typefaces of the 21st century. Number 8 is Lemon Milk. The Lemon Milk font is versatile and highly readable typeface that is perfect for a wide range of creative projects. The font family includes 8 different styles including four upright and matching italic versions. The key benefits of Lemon Milk font is its clean, geometric shapes and its ability to create a unique and distinctive look when combined with thicker line weights. The font is modern, elegant, making it ideal for both display sizes and headlines. You can pair this font with Lora or Libre Basketball. Number 9 is Proxima Nova. Released in 2005, Proxima Nova is an extremely popular typeface designed by Mark Simonson. It is often described as a hybrid of Futura and Accident Grotesque, combining a geometric appearance with modern proportions. Proxima Nova is available in 7 weights, each with matching italics as well. It has great flexibility and can be used for titles and paragraph text as well. Number 10 is Flux Architect. These are the kind of fonts that architects use in technical drawing. There are a lot of fonts of similar nature, but most of it are too thin to be used in presentation sheets and that would limit its visibility. Whereas this font called Flux Architect has variations of regular, bold and italics which are of good thickness to be used in presentations. This font was originally released in 2004 and it's available for free commercial use. So that was it from the list. We hope these font suggestions and typography tips were helpful to you. If you did, please hit that like button and share it with your friends. Comment down below what other fonts that you use regularly in your presentations. You can follow me on Instagram and the handle is right here. I'll see you on the next one.